been a long journey, huh, Luffy? This is the big one, folks. It's Parcel Jutsu here to do my live reaction to One Piece chapter 1049. And I'm gonna just be I'm gonna be straight up with you guys, I'll be real. I know from a certain thumbnail from taking 101's uh, review of this chapter, clearly you know, I haven't read this chapter, but obviously, with, and especially after the last chapter, it's not a huge leap to guess that this is the chapter where Luffy finally beats Kaido. So, uh, I'm not going to pretend that it's not. This has to be it. Like, there's no way it's not. Uh, and if I'm wrong about that, I would be absolutely shocked. So, you know what? Let's just get right into it. It's been, a, it's been years in the making since this arc started. And, uh, I think Kaido, the beast, is finally <laughs> going to be defeated. And given the, the treasure that he's been looking for, a true defeat in the hardest battle of his life. And so the chapter is titled, The World You Wish For. Uh, but yes, first we start with the cold-blooded journey of the voyage of the Germa in the volume of 11 and the book's on fire. That means they're going to be free. Who cares? Okay, fuck it. Who cares? I don't care. I'll be honest. I don't give a shit about Saji's brothers. I would love for them to be tortured by the Big Mom family, but you know what? I don't care anymore. Just whatever. I don't I don't want to think about that right now. We're moving on to this chapter. A fierce hockey clash who will prevail. So yeah, in case uh, you missed the last chapter, Luffy's coming down with the ultimate fist, and Kaido has turned himself into a giant fire dragon, which apparently, I didn't catch this, like it wasn't quite clear to me when I read the chapter, of uh, the last chapter, but I, it's not, it's, it's a Kaido, it's not that Kaido's covered his own body in fire, it's that he's, he's created like a giant, like, Susano made of fire of, of like a dragon surrounding his dragon body so it's like he's a dragon inside of a dragon so this is like a really really massive flaming dragon we're talking about here clashing with Luffy and they're doing the, the Roger Whitebeard clash of hockey where they're not actually touching so uh yeah that's where we're at right now <laughs> and then above the flower capital and above Onigashima they are clashing, and Kaido is trying to, this flame dragon of Kaido's is trying to do the snake thing where it's unhinging his jaw, and it's just trying to swallow Luffy's massive fist. Uh, well played. Luffy's just wincing uh, from, like, the shockwave and the heat, and he's just like, oh. Uh, Kaido says, uh, I have to hand it to you uh, for coming this far, but... You'll never be able to change the world. And we've seen Luffy doing just that throughout the entire series. Every opponent that he's faced, he's changed the world a little more each time. And I feel like he's about to do it again in a big, bad way. First, we're getting the thing that I think a lot of people, including myself, have been wanting. And the one thing that could possibly delay the final conclusion of this, of this battle, but I don't think it will. But we are getting a look into Kaido's past again. And I see a cute little baby Kaido. <laughs> I see it. So yeah, we're, Kaido's flashing back to his past. If we just see a massive fire of this battlefield like in, in the middle of a city it's just destruction and s flame and smoke and we see a little figure walking out of that chaos and we hear he did it he may only be 10 years old uh but that kaido kid is the strongest soldier around soldier oh my god so kaido was a child soldier Holy shit, that is a massive bomb right there. Just just that alone. That that's like that's like bullet backstory a little bit from Stampede, I think. Like he was like a child soldier, I think. Holy shit. And just like Whitebeard when he was a kid, he was forged in battle from a from a very, very young age. Oh boy. Okay, so we see we see a cute 
adorable little 10 year old Kaido who <laughs> just looks like Nelson Muntz with horns. He's just like, he's got, has like a scarf around his neck and an open vest. Uh, he's just, he's got his Kanabo, he's got a little spiky Kanabo. Uh, so that's always been his weapon of choice. He's just looking very badass as he walks away from the explosion that he caused. Uh, or this, and the soldiers are cheering. Uh, like his fellow soldiers, uh, oh my god, dude. 46 years ago. <laughs> Look. Where else would Kaido be from? We finally learned the country where Kaido was born in and where he's from. Where else would it be other than the Kingdom of Vodka? <laughs> I mean, it's Kaido we're talking about here. The perpetual drunk. The drunken dragon. Where else would he be from, really? The, the Kingdom of Vodka, of course. Just hope the Kingdom of Vodka never invaded uh, One Piece Ukraine. But anyway, um... <laughs> Uh, our nation has no choice but to wage war. The loot we acquire is our only means of paying the Celestial Tribute. And it goes the Celestial Dragons Tribute again, which has ruined countless kingdoms and countries. Uh, so the Kingdom of Vodka is no different. Uh, if we fail to do that, we'll lose our standing in the world. And so here we see kind of, maybe looks a little older, like a teenager. Uh... Why do the Celestial Dragons get to boss you around? Kaido, enough! Oh, wow. So it looks like he's chained up in front of the king of the Vodka Kingdom. It's like a bunch of soldiers trying to hold him. He's, he's already getting huge. Like, he's bigger than all these other men around him. <laughs> uh, so he's questioning the king on why he has to pay the heavenly tribute. Uh, and the king says, we have offered you up uh, for Navy enlistment. Uh, you want me to be a government dog? Uh, to be blunt, our country can't handle you. And we see a Marine coming in here. Uh, if you hand him over now, you're guaranteed a seat at the next reverie. So, wow. Oh, my God. We're actually, so we're actually getting the Kaido flashback, dude. I'm still, oh, my God. I had a feeling it might it might happen in this chapter. So Kaido is the strongest warrior in his nation, and they they can't even handle him. He's so strong, so they had to give him to the navy. A lot like Big Mom in her childhood, which it, it could have been. This, it was almost the same thing with her. Like like Mother Caramel was trying to recruit her to the navy because she's so freakishly strong. So that's very very interesting parallel there. Uh, and Kaido's just like, uh, I'm not a political bargaining chip, damn it! And we just cut to a marine ship, we're just like, like, it's smoking. Kaido escaped! So this is the first time he escaped from the Navy's, uh, the Marines' clutches. We get his first bounty, which looks like 70 million, uh, dead or alive, just Kaido. Still no last name for Kaido, it's just, just Kaido. So I'm assuming at this point he doesn't have one, he's just... I don't know, maybe he was an orphan and they someone just found him and just named him. You'll be Kaido. Just Kaido, like Cher. <laughs> um, uh, we already caught him, though. <laughs> Did he really escape again? I heard he gets caught on purpose when he's hungry. <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> he's caught on purpose when he's hungry. That sounds like some movie might do. A prison ship isn't a buffet. <gasps> oh, my God. We cut to the original pirate paradise, uh, full of lead island, 44 years ago. And so this is obviously like the, the, the headquarters for the Rocks Pirates, and like this is where they formed. Uh, and we just see Kyle just beat the shit out of some poor schmuck, and people are cheering. He's so strong! Who the hell is this guy? Uh, how could he be only, how could he only be 15? So this is 15-year-old Kaido looking like uh, like like Jason Momoa on steroids. <laughs> uh, oh my god, here's Whitebeard. <laughs> we get Whitebeard. Uh, hey, brat. Uh, Oi, Kuzo. <laughs> uh, you want to be a pirate? Uh, Rox wants to meet you. 
what will you do? And then just, we're just getting like a rapid fire because that was just, uh, Kaido has joined the Rocks Pirates. They're unstoppable now. Uh, Kaido, come quick. It's important. We're going to God Valley. Okay, so yeah, we're just we're just filling in the, a lot of stuff we already know, but it's, it's, so we're just getting it like rapid fire. Uh, so Kaido looks happy here. He's like smiling. Uh, I'm guessing he's like in his late teens here, like maybe like 16 to 18 ish. Uh, so we see, are we gonna see rocks? Are we gonna see like really see rocks for the first time in this? Holy shit! Uh, we might. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I think this is Whitebeard here who's calling. Uh, who's calling Kaido? Uh, okay, we just skip over the God Valley incident. Uh, the rocks have fallen. <laughs> I see. Uh, I, see, I get it. The rocks have fallen. That's a good, good pun there. Uh, are you kidding? With all the monsters on that crew? I heard a Marine called Gart beat him. Uh, no way, I bet their infighting did him in. Uh, none of them were team players. Uh, don't screw, oh, is this Big Mom? This is like young, sexy Big Mom? Don't screw with me. Uh, where the hell did you go, Kaido? And we see uh, Hikarashi Kurozumi, the old lady with, who had the bone clays devil for uh, ten years have passed since that incident, Kaido. You are now known as the embodiment of brutality. Me, kya, 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 kya. So we just see Kaido and, K and King by his side. Uh, but Kaido's like sitting in his like throne with his flag of neck above him. Uh, so did he? Ha did he have a meeting with Higurashi, and that's why Kaido went to Wano because of her? Because we, we know that she has some kind of dealings in the past with Shiki because she turned into his face for a second. So we know that she, we know she's like, she spent a lot of time outside of Wano. And so she maybe ran across some like really strong pirates, including Kaido, and she directed Kaido to Wano. Holy shit. Um, so, uh, if you study history, humans have always... Uh, resorted to brutality to solve the world's problems. Uh, but then again, humans are just like any other animal. Survival of the fittest is our true nature. And so she just she's appealing. Uh, is that is that Queen? There's, there's also there's like a chubby pirate next to Kaido. Uh, that, I don't know. It might be Queen. Maybe not. We just see Kaido looking looking. Pretty, uh, pretty chadly and handsome in this panel here. But <laughs> he goes, couldn't agree more. And she, uh, her garage, she goes, from now on, everything will revolve around the former members of the Rocks crew. Weapons shape the world we live in. With that in mind, I have a proposition for you. Nee, kyo, 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 kyo. <laughs> so she, she has her own signature laugh, a lot like these uh, past villains of One Piece. It would just cut to Kaido, just like... Like raising his katabo, like it looks like uh, I can't tell. It looks like this. This is inside of the Onigashima Palace, like in the live floor. Maybe I can't, I can't tell though. But like he's he's like he's speak he's giving a speech to all of his his uh, his massive crew. Let's show all those peace loving nobles the hellish reality of war. And they're like, yeah. One's worth can only truly be gauged in battle. Uh, where everyone is equal and anarchy rage free. So yes, this is this would definitely be the the lessons that Kaido has learned throughout his life at this point. Uh, just it might makes right basically. So now we, <laughs> at this point Yamato has already been born. As he, uh, Kaido says, Yamato mentioned Joy Boy. He he's talking to King. Just the two of them. Uh, not sure how that brat learned his name. And so, of course, Kaido and King have talked about Joy Boy throughout their whole relationship. Uh, if Joy Boy is the same man that you're waiting for, King, then I know who he is. King goes, who is it? And, just, uh, and Kaido says, apparently Odin wanted to open a Wano to welcome Joy Boy. And King's just like listening, but then we cut back to the Luffy and Kaido in the present, 
And they're just clashing still as the storm clouds are just parting. Oh, and we see the last member of Ija Zero like scurrying away. He's like flying away using Geppo. So he's like the last one alive. He's like, alright, I'm, I'm gonna get out of Dodge. So yeah, he's just, he's, he's peacing out. <laughs> uh, it's interesting that we focus on that. But yeah, yeah, I guess I was wondering what would happen with that guy. So yeah, this guy right here is probably going to be, uh, among other things, he's going to be the reason why the Straw Hats get their bounties boosted after this arc, because he's seen everything. He knows what's going on. And so, yeah, we're going to get some bounty increases after this. But, uh, so we cut to Momonosuke. Uh, uh, Luffy will win. I know it. And Yamato's like, do it, Momonosuke-kun! And Momo's just like, Ugh! come forth, flame clouds! Obey me! And so we see, uh, and we see the the, the Skylanders still rising from the flower capital as everyone's still partying. They still don't notice anything. So we cut to Kid, uh, the live floor dome interior. And so there's just like rubble falling on top of it. But Kid looks, he's like, looks like he's kind of out of it. He's just like, hmm? So we see rubble's like falling down on everyone in the live floor. Uh, and Someone's like, what is that racket? It's someone, you just hear like, you see Rizo, uh, the water of Zoe shall save everyone. Oh yeah, I guess there's still fire burning in the in the live floor. Uh, so the water's like rushing in. And we see Brooke and Robin are like submerged in the water. So that's not good for them. They're dope for users. They're just, they're like, they're barely... Robin looks unconscious, and Brooke is, like, almost unconscious. And, uh, we see, uh, BB and Rhodey here, like, swimming in the water. And we see Beppo, Penguin, and Shachi, like, kind of just flailing. And we see Apu just getting crashed down by the water. And EB, too. Um, yeah, last time we saw them, they were fighting. Oh, uh, they are about to fight, I mean. And so, but they're getting knocked down by the water. So, yeah, the water's, like, crashing. And we see, uh... Law and John Bart, like, like, be like, oh shit. And so the, I guess the water is just like crashing through the live floor, which is like the last place that it, it, it needed to go. Uh, and so yeah, then we see Kinemon and Kiku just be washed away into the room. Uh, we see Nami and uh, Chopper and Tama. And Nami goes, water? And yeah, just all the water just completely finally washes through Odegashiba and starts like pouring out. Spoofs, water's crashing. Uh, Osome-chan! And we see uh, Saji and his girls, and the, his geishas that he's hanging out with, are getting hit by the water. And Saji's like, oh, and Saji's got his, the heart in his eyes, but he's going like, where did this water come from? And we cut to Frankie, uh, who's holding Zoro. Uh, Careful, you're getting washed away! <laughs> We're just cutting all over the place, the treasure repository, second floor. You've done well. Really well. And we just see, we see, uh, Denjiro holding Hiyori after, after they finally beat Orochi. And we just see Orochi's head just burning to a crisp on the floor. Uh, uh, so Denjiro's like, you've done really well to endure this for so many moons. Yorisama, and we just we get a flashback to when he was bowing to her. It was Papador was on the on the floor, uh, and she's just crying into his chest. All right, so we see the smoke as the fire gets put out in the live floor. Someone's like, uh, "Wow, uh, the island isn't it falling?" And Yabuto, we cut to Yabuto. Uh, the flame clouds are gone. Oh no! Oh no, the water put out the flame clouds. Oh god damn it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, not good. Oh, Nikashima is going to crash. And Momo's reaction, just like his eyes popping out, like, ah. And so we come to Luffy and Kaido. Kaido's like trying to chop down on Luffy's fist. I can't tell if that he's actually making contact, though. I don't think he's actually biting into Luffy's fist. He might be, though. It's hard to tell. 
Uh, and Kaido's like, Straw Hat, what kind of world do you wish to make? And Luffy's just face is just like, ah, like he's really, really straight in here. Like this is like his last move possible. And so Momo, if we get a double page here, as Momo says, Flame Clouds appear! And then Momo finally just Kamehameha's a bunch of flame clouds out of his dragon hands. Just boom! Just like blast flame clouds for the first time. He really, really fires them out. And Yamato's just like, mm -hmm. and Momo's like, mm -hmm. And then he starts wrapping all those thick flame clouds around Onigashima. And Luffy and Kaido's just clashing. Just hockey lightning is going everywhere. Oh my god. And then just boom! Massive shockwave from Luffy's fist as it comes down and right into Kaido's mouth. And Kaido's just like, his jaws snap back. If you see the, the, that, that's like the flame cloud dragon. You see Kaido's actual body inside of the dragon there. And then Luffy answers his question. A world where my friends, and boom, and finally the fist actually connects. Or that, maybe not the fist, but the hockey or the force connects with Kaido's actual body. Kaido just, boom, gets smashed like a bug. A world where my friends we see Kaido's eyes roll back like he's going unconscious. Uh, can eat as much as they like. Ooh, just pounding down on Kaido. That's my kind of world. And then Kaido just, you see like it's he just looks up at Luffy, who's like screaming, and then just... Oh my god, this beautiful art. It's like, it's like a cyclone, it's like, like, you see like the twisting force like going into Kaido's body as it just gets clocked in the face. You see like Luffy's arms stretching into like the, into the camera, like into your perspective. It's like, like shaded out. He just knocks Kaido the fuck down, and Kaido looks like he's out cold. And we get that that thing that I love in anime, where it's like you see the anime, the, the you see the bad guy getting blasted by energy, and like they get like engulfed by the light of the energy. That's kind of that's what we're getting with Kaido. It's just like like he just gets enveloped by energy, and like he just like like it obscures him from vision, and he just. Boom! Finally blast Kaido into the ground with the final move. Of the most fuck off punch imaginable. And we see the Sky Lanterns floating up. And we see Kaido's body's like coiled up as he gets like indented into the ground. As he's just like buried underground. And he's thinking like as he loses consciousness, he's thinking, Gang, I know who he is. It's coughing up blood. And King goes, who is it? And Kaido says, Joy Boy is the man who will be able to beat me one day. And Kaido, I just love that. I love this like Aurora Boris looking like, like Uzumaki, like twisted dragon body of Kaido as he goes like, it's like drilling into the ground almost. And then he goes, uh, And then, oh man, this is a really nice moment here with King and Kaido. It's like, it's King smiles, he says, uh, if that's true, I don't think he'll ever appear. So that's like King's faith in Kaido, that he is absolutely unbeatable. And then we see Onigashima, I think it stopped, Momo finally stopped it from going, but it, it's still next to the flower capital. And people are looking up at the, at the Sky Lanterns, cheering. Uh, here's a couple of them that say, uh, please vanquish the scary dragon. And another one goes, uh, restore the Kazuki clan. And so, oh my god, and Momo safely brings Onigashima down to the ground. Outside of the flower capital. 
and he's just pooped. <laughs> he's, just, he's just like, he's exhausted. He just collapses. And Luffy looks exhausted, even more exhausted than he is. And of course, we'll be on break next. We got to this fucking chapter. Holy shit. And uh, we just end the chapter with 20 years in the making. And of course, we have amazing fan art here. Oh my god, dude. Just visual splendor. Oh man. Oh my god. This fan art is really, really good. Holy shit, man. And of course, I can't wait to see all this shit in the anime eventually. Oh man, that is... Oh, we're getting a lot of fan art here. <laughs> oh, that is cool. That's really... Oh man. Sorry, I'm just looking at the fan art. Oh my god. <laughs> that was it. Oh. And you cannot tell me Kaido is not done after that. It's over. We beat two Yonko in this arc. <laughs> Big Mom and Kaido are done. They've been defeated in battle. What is that going to mean for the future? I don't even want to start thinking about that right now because I'm just, I'm basking in it, man. This is the, this is the big one. Luffy has been fighting so long to beat Kaido. It's been years for us reading it. And that's it, man. It's been, and it's been 20 years for the people of Wano. Dude, man, this is, <laughs> this is it. That's it, man. There's nothing. My God. Luffy is officially an emperor. Oh my God, dude. Thank you for watching my live reaction to this chapter. There's so much to take in, man. Oh my God, dude. Oh man, I'm just glad I made it this far <laughs> to see this incredible achievement in this series. Anyway, please like the video, comment, subscribe. That's all I got. <laughs>